Good. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to PACAX Keystone Virtual uh, College Exploration. My apologies for my assistant in the background who has just decided to bark, but welcome to the days of Zooming. Uh, for students in the audience, I look forward to introducing you to Matthew Connor from Juniata College. I think you're going to enjoy what you're hearing. A couple of notes just before we begin. Um, there, there will be a recording of this and it is going to be available at the very same place where you signed up for, uh, for this conference, which which is www.pacac.org slash virtual. So I invite you back if you want to check out the recording again or take a look at some other recordings. Your audio and your video will be off, um, but uh, you are able to use the question and answer feature. Uh, and Juniata will have somebody uh, on hand to answer your very uh, all of your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Matthew. And thank you very much on behalf of PACAC. Matthew, the floor is yours. And thank you for that introduction. That was wonderful. I appreciate that. Uh, give me one moment and let me make sure I get my uh, sharing screen from here properly. Uh, so you're not seeing my screen. There we go. Jack, can you verify that you can see my screen? I sure can. Awesome. Okay. You can see the presentation. Correct. I see okay. your welcome slide right now. Wonderful. That is great. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Matthew Connor. I'm an admissions counselor here at Junietta. As you can tell, since I've had her talking, I have Kat Swantak here with me. Um, she will be working the question and answer feature. Um, so you are welcome to join us that way as well. Please uh, add your questions in there. She will uh, answer those and, and work to make sure I answer all the questions that you have. Um, uh, just to give you a brief uh, intro to, to Juniata, we are a, a uh, private liberal arts college in Huntington, Pennsylvania. Um, we're about 45 minutes south of State College, about 40 minutes east of Altoona. And if you are familiar with Raystown Lake, we're about 10 minutes north of the north end of Raystown Lake. Um, I like to say we are smack in the middle of central Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm going to start with just talking about our students, describing our students here real briefly. Um, We'd like to describe our students as fun, smart, and focused. Um, me personally, I think all those three things kind of go together hand in hand. Um, they're fun, they're engaged in things, whether it be academically, extracurricularly, um, whether it be getting engaged with other people across campus. Um, they're smart, they're, they're engaged in their classes, they work hard in their classes, um, and that kind of goes into focus as well. I think the smart and focus piece really tie back and forth to each other um, because they're, they're highly engaged both in the classroom academically and then out of the classroom, whether it be academically or extracurricularly, and they, they really are well-rounded students. Um, so we definitely describe our students as fun, smart, and focused. Now to give you some, some brief numbers about Juniata, um, we have around 1,400 students. Uh, we have students from about 30 countries and 32 states, hoping to add to that this year. Um, about 17% domestic underrepresented students and about 7% international students. Um, we have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. You will realize as I go through this um, that I am a numbers person. I, ha I have uh, my undergraduate degree in mathematics there, and uh, you will get many statistics from me from this. Um, if you look at all of our classes overall, 71% of our classes have 20 students or less. So you're going to have small class sizes. You're going to get to know professors really well um, every day in the classroom, whether it be through the advising or different things like that. Um, we do have over 100 clubs and organizations. There's a lot of different options. I'll talk about those a little bit later on. Um, but just to, to mention a couple of, of things that students get involved with, there's service organizations like Habitat for Humanity and THON. There's ones that are focused on academics like the American Chemical Society. Um, there's ones that are focused on extracurricular activities. Um, there's one called Happy Hammocking, and we'll talk some more about those a little bit later on. And we do, um, we do not have any fraternities or sororities on campus. So to start off, um, I think we need to answer this question first. What makes us distinct? What makes us unique from other liberal arts colleges? What sets Juniata apart? Um, and I'm going to kind of talk about this in, in three ways. Um, the first thing that I'm going to note here um, is that we were mentioned in, we were featured in a book called Colleges That Change Lives. This was written by Lauren Pope. Um, and it talks about why Juniata is a place that, that Lauren Pope believed um, was a college that sets students on the right track to have successful, rewarding lives and careers. Um, I will tell you that the URL, um, sorry, the um, QR code you see on your screen is something new I am trying. I have not 
um, verified it, but if you uh, are able to utilize that at this time, if you're not on your phone, you can, it'll take you to um, kind of our page of uh, CTCL and get to learn some more about why Lauren Pope thought Juniata was such a great place. Um, in this book, some of the things that, that Lauren mentions um, is the students that graduate from Juniata. Um, if you look at our graduating classes, 96% of those students graduate from Juniata in four years or less, which means they come to Juniata, they're taking the classes that they need to take um, to be successful, and then they're leaving Juniata to pursue whatever is next. The other statistic that you have to pair with that is how quickly are students finding that next step. Um, Juniata has a 90% success rate, um, which means that when students leave Juniata, 90% um, of them within six months of graduating have either uh, enrolled in graduate school or been employed full time. So they're finding successfully that next steps to that, that further their career, whether that be entering the workforce, whether it be graduate school, um, doctoral, doctoral school or anything like that. Um, some other things are kind of our success rate in the health professions. We have uh, over an 85% acceptance rate um, or success rate for students in the health professions field. Um, we send students um, as Fulbright fellows or cold water um, recipients to, to um, serve or to teach abroad or those sorts of things. Um, so there's a lot of, of ways that students are finding the next step. The other thing that is unique about Juniata is the ability to design your own education. Um, so we don't operate on the traditional major minor system. We operate on something called a program of emphasis um, or a POE, you'll hear me refer to it. Um, a, a POE is very similar to a major or minor in that it's really what your area of study is, what you're focusing on. But at Juniata, you have some more flexibility depending on what you're, you're, you're wanting to study. Um, I'm going to kind of explain this, giving you two examples. Um, we have designated POEs and individualized POEs. Um, a designated POE is something that you think about when you're going to college and you're studying a specific field. So my background is in math education. Um, if you come to Juniata and you are studying education, that's a very structured curriculum that you have to take in order to graduate because the state says these are the classes that you have to take in order to be prepared for this field. Um, and so you still have choices for classes, but that is, it's more of a, it's an outline program. You pick and choose your classes within that to, to create your four years here at Juniata. The other kind of POE, an individualized POE, is for students that are trying to figure out what their area of interest is, or they have a very specified area of interest. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of them is, um, could possibly be um, computer science and philosophy. Um, so maybe you're interested in technology, computer science, but you're also in in interested in what's legally, ethically, morally right and wrong in terms of utilizing that technology. You could take classes in computer science and information technology, um, but also take classes in, in um, philosophy and in politics and those sorts of classes to, to really design that education on your own. Um, some couple examples um, for you. We have uh, students that have studied environmental chemistry, uh, maybe business and writing or something like that. Um, students studying politics and, and psychology, um, creative communication and entrepreneurial leadership. Um, or different things like that. Students really get to pick and choose um, what they want their area of study to be. Um, I'm gonna pause at this screen for a moment longer and talk about the Juniata curriculum. Um, there's classes that, um, not classes, there are um, styles of classes that every student is required to take while they're at Juniata. Um, and there's kind of two of those fields. One of them is gonna be called self and the world. Um, it's gonna help you determine where you fit in the world and how you view the world. Um, so maybe you'll take a class that um, is encouraging you to think about something from somebody else's per perspective, to learn about a different culture, to, to think about a foreign language or take a foreign language or to study abroad or an international studies course. Um, the other um, style of classes that you will take while you're at Juniata is called ways of knowing. And this ways of knowing is challenging you to think about something from different perspectives. Um, one example that always pops into my mind um, because I have a very science-based um, is studying fracking and you're not just studying um, the, the science what's what happening with when uh, with fracking but you're actually studying uh, the politics and the the, um, the ethics of it um, so you study what is happening with it in, in the wall and what is scientifically happening and so those are kind of some examples of the different courses that you will take as a junior idea.
Um, one of the uh, final things that I have to mention about students um, and the uniqueness of Juniata is the academic partnership with your advisor. Every student works with two advisors during their time here at Juniata. Um, these two advisors are going to do a lot of different things for students. Um, they're going to help them design their curriculum to graduate in four years. They're going to help students um, find the internship opportunities across campus, um, off campus, across the country. They're going to help students prepare for study abroad and those sorts of things. Um, they're going to they're going to help with all of those things, but they're also going to be a way for you to connect um, while you're on campus. These advisors aren't just people that are helping you professionally and within academics. They're going to help you find the clubs and organizations. They're going to help you make sure that you're prepared for whatever that next step is. So each student um, has two advisors that they work with um, during their time at Junior that really help them shape their, their education and prepare for whatever the next steps are, along with helping that person, um, that student develop um, into a, a more, more well-rounded student. I'm going to jump to hands-on learning. Um, one thing I didn't mention before, me saying I'm a, a numbers and statistics person, 95% um, of our students before they graduate have some sort of hands-on learning experience. Um, I, personally, I think that's critical. I think it, you, you have to have experience in whatever field you're interested in going into or somewhere in that discipline. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of examples of those kind of represented in the four photos here. Um, so one way that students do it is, is through um, our museum here um, on, the, the, on campus. Um, we have uh, over 500 pieces of art that are, that are college owned that students kind of get to, to learn to uh, take care of and study um, and, and catalog. And they actually get to learn how to uh, be a museum curator. And so you can take classes about that. And that's an internship opportunity. Um, another example um, is you see in the top left hand photo, um, the Raystown Field Station. I mentioned Raystown Lake before. Raystown Lake is the largest lake inside the state of Pennsylvania. Um, it actually was a river until the late, late 1960s and was dammed for flood control. Um, and so on that lake, um, Juniata has the Raystown Field Station where students actually go and they reside there for a semester at a time. All of their professors come down and teach the classes there. They stay there, they eat there, um, and they really have 24 seven access to study um, whatever area of interest it is. So it's a great way for students to, to get their hands um, working on something in their field. Some environmental science students do some really interesting research, um, whether that be with the wild brown trout population in the area, studying their mercury levels, whether it be working with one of their professors, um, studying the rusty crayfish in the local um, rivers, those sorts of things. Um, the other two photos you see down at the bottom, um, in the bottom right, you see a, a student studying abroad um, and maybe having an internship abroad. You really never know um, this, the things that students are able to do while they are studying abroad. Maybe it's studying at a different university. Maybe it's working for a company um, in a different country. In the bottom left-hand corner um, is something called a photo representing liberal arts symposium. Um, it's also referred to as Mountain Day of the Mind. You'll understand kind of why I say Mountain Day of the Mind here in a minute. Um, but the liberal arts symposium is a way for students to present what they've done that semester or that year. Um, so maybe students have done research in with their psychology professor and studying the eye movement um, based on viewing different uh, photos or different kinds of photos. Um, maybe you have a student that is, is um, demonstrating what they found in the wild brown trout population in the area. Um, maybe you have a student that interned at the Washington Center in Washington, D.C. with an interest in politics, um, and they're coming back and talking about what they did there and how it impacted other people or, or something along those lines. Um, uh, something that I thought was interesting at the Liberal Arts Symposium this spring is we had a student that was studying history um, and they actually studied the, the Jeep, the company Jeep, and focused on not only the progression of the Jeep from its origin until now, but also studied the United States and what was happening in the United States that caused the Jeep to progress through that. Um, and so the Liberal Arts Symposium is a great way for students to, to showcase the knowledge that they have created um, or the knowledge that they have, they have gained. Um, going back to study abroad here real briefly, um, about half of our students study abroad at some point in time. We have students who go to six of the seven continents. Um, there's study abroad opportunities that are two weeks long. There's ones that are semester long, and there's opportunities that are entire year long, depending on what your area of study is. 
Um, this is kind of going back to internships a little bit more and seeing where students go. Um, I, I talk about a lot of those, but I think it's really cool to see the places that Juniata students go. Um, and it really depends on the student based on what their interest is. Maybe we have a student that goes to Washington and studies um, at one of the universities and does research on aquatic um, sciences. Maybe we have a student that goes to uh, San Francisco and works in the technology sector or in marketing or something like that. Um, we have students that they go all over the place to do different internship opportunities. And I think this does a nice job of kind of representing that for us. Um, I'm not gonna read directly to you this, um, but I, I think it's important to recognize Juniata students go places. Um, whether they're going into uh, kind of one of the, the prestigious uh, law schools or medical programs, whether they're going directly into the workforce and working for one of the bigger companies um, or those sorts of things. I think the important piece for me to point out on this page um, is the number of students that say that Juniata prepared them for that next step. Um, that, that really shows how successful they are with that next step, how well developed they are, maybe not even only in their area, their field, um, but also in um, kind of being a well-rounded person and having the skills to, to cope with the stresses um, and the successes of, of working in that field. So what is life like at Juniata? Switching a little bit, um, Juniata definitely is um, has a strong supportive community. You're going to be challenged, you're going to be pushed both academically and outside of your comfort zone, um, but you're going to be supported through that. Um, you're going to find connections across campus, you're going to find engaging things to do, whether they be academically or extracurricularly. Um, and so that's kind of one of the, the great things. Um, I have to talk momentarily about some of our traditions, because I think that's one of the very unique things about Juniata um, is some of the traditions. Um, there's two that I'm going to really recommend to you, and I'll tell you what the other two are, um, but I encourage looking more into them. In the top left-hand photo, you see um, the photo representing Mountain Day. Um, Mountain Day is a day that, um, that is a surprise to everyone. There's only a handful of people across campus that know when it is, um, and what happens is all classes um, and all activities on campus are canceled for the day, um, and it's a day of gathering and a day of, of celebration of, of being part of the Juniata community. Um, so everybody goes down to the lake or a local park um, and, and hangs out um, and the college has all sorts of outdoor games um, and activities going on. There's always uh, staff um, versus students tug of war. Um, there's obstacle courses that you have lunch down there. Um, I know my first experience at Mountain Day last fall um, was great because I had only been working at Juniata for two weeks and the number of people that I met and connected with was great. Um, and so I think it's a great opportunity for first year students to learn how to connect to Juniata. Um, and it's a great way to, to be part of a Juniata co community um, and, and to gather together. The other tradition I have to talk about is, is Lobster Fest, which is just down in the right hand corner. Um, I'm going to start off with telling you um, why it's called Lobster Fest, um, but then I'll kind of talk about why I love this event so much. Um, so Lobster Fest is a day in the fall where all the clubs and organizations set up a table on campus, um, and you can see the table represented in the back there. Um, what happens is when these clubs and organizations set up tables, students go around and talk to them and learn about the club or an organization. Um, and then the reason it's called Lobster Fest is that at the end of the event, everybody has fresh Maine lobster that, that we had flown in. Um, and so it's a great way for students to get engaged with that, that you have fresh Maine lobster, you have other um, options depending on dietary restrictions. Um, and it's a great way for students to get connected to those clubs. Um, the reason that I personally love this event so much, and it's kind of um, grown on me even more than what I realized, is I think it's a great way for students to learn about clubs and organizations without having to feel the pressure of being the only student or the only person walking into a new meeting. Um, and so you get to learn about these clubs and make a connection before having to say, I'm committing to this club or being the only new person walking into a meeting. So it really takes away that challenge. Um, and it's a great way to make a connection to campus. Um, I, I highly encourage you uh, get involved on campus, ask questions about clubs and organizations. If you can't find a club and organization um, that interests you, create one. Um, so I talked about Habitat for Humanity and the Thon organization. Um, I talked about some of those other ones earlier. Um, but there's clubs or organizations for, for really anything um, academic, extracurricular, um, anything that you want to get involved in. And I think that's a, a great way for students to, to stay engaged at Juniata. 
Uh, along with that, I'm not going to tell you about these traditions, so I highly encourage um, looking them up and, and learning about them. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you see something called madrigal, um, and madrigal is kind of paired with tenting. Um, I highly encourage looking it up, um, or, or I'll make a recommendation for joining us for a virtual tour, um, and you can ask a student, a current student, about that experience. Um, in the top right-hand photo, you see something called storming of the arch. Um, that's a very unique event um, for, for Juniata students. Um, and so I highly encourage looking those up. If you, you uh, search for Juniata traditions, you definitely can come across those and I highly encourage it. Along with traditions, um, we do have uh, Division Three varsity sports. We have 23 of them. Um, we have eight national championships. You can see 135 All-Americans and around 30% of our students are involved in athletics um, and in varsity athletics. And we also have club and individual athletics for students to stay engaged with as well. So this question I always struggle with, um, is Huntington a college town or a town with a college? Um, I think it's definitely more of a town with a college. And the reason I say that is because um, students get involved in the local community. Maybe they're working at the courthouse in town or one of the law offices. Maybe they're working with a small business in town, redoing their marketing and advertisement. Um, maybe they're working at the local um, animal shelter. Um, and so there's ways for students to get engaged in the local community. Um, but at the same time, we have community members that get engaged on campus. Um, and so it's really a, a two-way street when it comes to that. So it's, it's definitely a, a community overall as well. Um, but either way, it definitely is a, a quiet, powerful place. Um, like I mentioned before, we're situated at the north end of a town called Huntingdon. Um, it is a, a rural community um, and surrounded by the beautiful um, rolling hills of central Pennsylvania. A couple of the things that I have to point out um, about Huntingdon um, is, is some of the, the small businesses, the mom and pop shops. Um, in the bottom left hand photo, you can see Boxers, um, which is a, a restaurant that's often uh, frequented in town. On um, the top left hand photo, you see students sitting outside one of the um, art museums, one of the art places in town. Um, in the top right hand photo, you see students, you see um, some of the mom and pop shops in the local community, whether it be a thrift store, whether it be a little boutique or something like that, um, but some of the small businesses in town. Um, and then in the bottom right hand photo, you see um, Standing Stone Coffee Company, um, which is actually a Juniata alumni owned um, coffee company. Students can often be found uh, either sitting inside or outside there um, and, and working on homework, gathering as a group, um, just kind of celebrating and hanging out, whatever it may be, um, but kind of being part of that, that community around. This is an overview. Um, it's kind of a, a beautiful flyover picture of Juniata. Um, you can see um, the, the actual college kind of in the center of our photo. You're actually looking south um, or southeast. Um, across or beyond the college. Um, one of the things that I really like to point out when I look at this photo is you can see um, everything is very centrally located. Um, we're not in the, the center of the town. We're kind of situated at the north end of the town. We have our own space. Um, you're not going to be walking through town to, to get to class. You're not going to be walking through town to, to uh, go to your residence hall unless you're choosing to live in one of our the college's owned off-campus residential houses. Um, but everything is very centrally located. It's often said that students can wake up for an eight o'clock class at 7.52 um, and still be at class by eight o'clock. Um, and I, I definitely could agree with that. Um, but you can see that it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's spread out, um, but yet you are still, um, you are on campus, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, this photo kind of shows Raystown Lake and the, the beauty of the surrounding area. If you visit, when you visit, I highly encourage visiting Raystown Lake. Um, like I mentioned, this, this spot right here is about 10 to 15 minutes south of uh, the campus. Um, beautiful rolling hills of Pennsylvania. Um, you can see the beauty of the lake. This is actually Hans Peninsula, or, or sorry, um, Hans Overlook or uh, right now at Overlook. Um, so if you visit with me when you are here, I will no doubt recommend so I'm going to briefly talk about the application process, um, specifically at Juniata. So Juniata, you can apply to through the Common App or the Coalition App. We accept both of them. Uh, there's four pieces that go into the application, um, and I'll talk about those here momentarily. Um, but I want to first talk about the application deadlines. Um, we have four application deadlines. Um, the first one is called early decision. This is for students that have already decided Juniata is the place that they want to be, um, and they're committing to Juniata. The deadline for that is November 15th. 
The other three applications um, are called Early Action 1, Early Action 2, and Regular Decision. Uh, you can see the deadline dates for each of those on the screen. Um, really, the, the difference in each of those is when a student is ready to apply and if they're wanting to wait a little bit longer so that they can uh, wait for new test scores or wait for a new transcript or that sort of thing. Um, so the earlier one you apply to, obviously, the earlier you're going to receive your decision back. Um, we encourage uh, filing the FAFSA if you are a senior this year um, by November 15th. That's not a requirement that helps us with the process, which then gets you your financial aid package back earlier. Um, you can see some, some other dates there. A um, couple of things to note about applying to Juniata. There's no application fee or cost to apply. Um, we are test optional. Um, we have, uh, Juniata has been test optional for over 20 years now, so it's not a new process for us. Um, so it, it, it's not something you should be worried about if that's the route you choose to go. And we do not have any supplemental essay. Um, so only the essay that is on Common App is the only essay that you are um, required to submit. Um, the four pieces that go into our application um, is actually the Common App or the Coalition App, whichever one you choose to submit through. Um, that's part one. Part two um, would be an official high school transcript. Part three would be letters of recommendation. And part four would be test scores if you are choosing to submit them. Talking briefly about financial aid at Juniata, every student um, when admitted to Juniata is automatically evaluated for merit aid um, and other grants awarded to Juniata students. Um, when students are evaluated for this, the, the scholarship range and grant range for students is between 18 to $45,000, um, which is a big range for students. Um, and we kind of recognize that each student's individual financial situation along with um, academic situation is different, um, but that kind of gives you a range of the merit aid awarded to students. Um, if you're curious about your specific situation and want to get a, an estimate, um, you can actually see our net price calculator at the very bottom of the screen there. Um, and you can, you can find it there. The one thing that I will point out, um, the, the last bullet point on the screen is the Juniata College Community Scholarship. If you know a Juniata alumni, um, you can actually ask them to fill out um, an application for, or it's not an application, you can ask them to fill out the scholarship form on your behalf and you can actually receive your $1,000 scholarship each year that you are here at Juniata um, just for them recommending you to Juniata. And it's a great way for you to ask them about their experience and learn about what they thought was unique about Juniata, great about Juniata, those sorts of things. Um, so I, I highly encourage that. Next steps for you all, and you'll notice another QR code here that will take you to our visit page. Um, I highly encourage um, visiting us through another way, and it kind of depends on what you're wanting to learn more about. Um, if you want to learn more about um, talking to a professor and actually have a, a tour all in one, learn more about the Juniata academic um, curriculum and expectations and those sorts of things, um, you can uh, visit us for one of our department days, a virtual open house. If you just want to talk with a professor and don't want to go through the live virtual guided tour, um, you can join us for a virtual faculty session. Um, one thing that I definitely encourage if you have not been able to, to see our beautiful campus and you want to talk with a current student um, is a live guided virtual campus tour um, because you'll actually get to see photos of campus and you'll have a student or that's, that's showing you those photos um, and talking about their experience and what each of the buildings um, what happens in each of the buildings and all of those sorts of things. Um, and you can actually ask them to tell you more about their favorite tradition. So I highly encourage that as well. Um, and I will uh, tell you there is a QR code there that will take you to the visit page. Um, but I am also going to put my contact information on the screen. Um, and it includes both of those. So if you're wanting to learn more about um, Colleges That Changed Lives um, and read that portion of the book, um, I highly encourage the, the one on the left. Um, you can actually visit and learn more about the Colleges That Change Lives book and why uh, Lauren Pope recommended Juniata as one of those colleges. If you want to learn more about visiting and, and the options, um, you can see a QR code on the right hand side. Um, that is my contact information in the middle. You are welcome to contact me directly after this um, and just say, hey, this is what I wanted to learn. Um, what can you tell me? Um, I'm happy to get you in touch with your admissions counselor. Um, to, to help answer those questions or possibly answer them myself if you're one of the students that is lucky enough to work with um, myself or Kat. Other than that, Kat, do we have any questions you are hoping I would answer aloud? Nope, all questions have been fielded. Wonderful. Well, we will hang out here a, a moment longer. Um, 
And other than that, I uh, will turn it back over to you, Anne. All right. Thanks so very much, Matthew and Kat. That was great. I love those pictures. I was ready to travel there myself. Um, but it is, it is such a beautiful area. Um, so I want to say thank you on behalf of PACAC uh, and to folks in the audience. Please remember there are still some sessions that are going to be going on through November 6th. So I encourage you to look at those on the www.pacac.org slash virtual website. Um, and if you would like to see a recording of this presentation and all of the other sessions that we've been hosting throughout the month, please, they will be available on that uh, spot as well. When I close this presentation, there will be a very brief four question survey for attendees to complete. Um, and I thank you in advance for doing that. Um, and Kat and Matthew, thank you very much. It was great to hear from you. Um, and hopefully um, we'll all be safe and healthy for the future so we can get to campus and visit. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thanks for participating. Bye-bye.